Hey, everyone. Before we begin today, we want to thank our newest patron, Catherine. Welcome to the team. As you know, we're gearing up for Persuasion, and this is Becca's first time reading the book. So she's been recording her initial thoughts to each chapter, and we're going to be releasing those as bonus episodes on Patreon throughout season four of this podcast. So if that sounds interesting to you, head on over to patreon.com slash pod and prejudice to see how you can support us. Now, you might be thinking, it's Monday. What are we doing releasing a Pot and Prejudice episode on a Monday? Well, it is Monday, April 1st, and some people who are near and dear to the podcast thought that would be a great opportunity to try something new and release a very special episode. So we have this little bonus episode for you, and in two weeks, we're going to be back to season three with one last episode about Emma Approved, this time with special guest Joanna Sotomora. And after that, we're going to have our season finale Q&A, which you all sent in your questions for and which we had a lot of fun with. So we really hope you enjoy that. After that, we're going to be going on a brief hiatus We might have some more bonus content for you throughout that to be determined. And then we're going to be back with season four of the podcast on June 11th. So with all of that being said, we hope you enjoy this very, very special episode of Pod and Pod and Prejudice. This is Mike. And this is Mel. We're here to talk about people talking about Jane Austen. We're here specifically to talk about Pod and Prejudice! I, Mike, have listened to every episode of Pod and Prejudice. And I, Mel, uh, came to the Pod and Prejudice scene pretty late in the game, so I've only listened to maybe three and a half episodes from the newer seasons. So I've never listened to uh, season one, and I've never read or seen many Jane Austen things. Um, I recently have, because we can share that uh, I I am dating Molly, and Molly has introduced me to the world, but uh, I'm pretty new to their podcast. Yes, and I am uh, I, so I'm engaged to Becca, so I've I've been following this um this this podcast like like almost they started like like maybe like a little less than a year before I met Becca. Yeah, um, which is which is pretty evident in this first episode, which we'll get into. Oh, I cannot wait. Yeah, this first episode, we're going to cover the first episode of Pot and Prejudice, and we want to make it clear that we're not covering any of the Jane Austen content. We are specifically covering their podcast, specifically, uh, yeah, of their first episode, which is called Pride and Prejudice, chapters one through four that aired on October 19th of 2019. Yeah, so that, okay, so yeah, so that would have been just a few months before Beck and I met. Beck and I met February 1st of 2020. So it's so great. <laughs> it's so good. So uh, I'll start by reading their episode description that is on their like podcast page, wherever you listen to it. So it says, Becca has read all of Jane Austen's work. Molly literally does not know who Mrs. Bennett is. Together, they venture into Austen's world of romance, biting satire, and class struggles. Like Austen? Interested in a modern take? This is the podcast for you. What do you think about that description, Mike? I... I, I it- it pretty much nails it. I think it's so funny thinking about like having listened to all of it, going back to a time where Molly doesn't even know who Mrs. Bennett is. Even like the fact that they don't know like their first names. I don't, I still don't think they know their first names. I've never heard it uttered. That's amazing. I love that. I will say this episode, for me, it started with an ad for a show that happened uh, a few weeks ago. So my first note is to like, let's remove that ad. Let's get rid of it. Nobody's showing up to a show that happened a few weeks ago. So that's my first uh, critique of this episode. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Molly needs to remove the ad for the Rip Bodice show, which was excellent, by the way. We were both there and it was a brilliant show, but I just think that's false advertising and we shouldn't give the people the wrong idea. <laughs> right. But you should go to the next live show whenever that's going to be. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's my criticism is there should be a live show every day of the week from now until forever. I have the exact same criticism. Yep. I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, so then after the ad that shouldn't be there anymore, uh, we get the theme music and the theme music. Um, maybe we could replicate it real quick. It was oh. like it was like. I thought it was great. It really put me into the time period. Suddenly I was transported to the Regency era. Um, I felt like the theme music was perfect. What did, what did you think? I thought, yeah, no, it, this is this is like the iconic uh, pot and prejudice music. I've heard the theme music in more recent episodes and I'm glad that they didn't like pull a boy meets world on us and change the theme song every season because that would have been a bummer. This is a perfect theme song. 
Yeah. Um, Okay, so then it kicks off with a quote from Becca, which she says, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Now, I had no idea what this meant, to be honest. I was like, I don't know what Becca's talking about. What is she saying? Um, And then uh, they make it clear. Molly says, and thus begins Pride and Prejudice. So I'm assuming that's how the book starts. Wait, you so you you actually don't know? You've never heard this before? (laughs) I think I've heard that quote like offhand from Molly and Becca, but... Um, and maybe in, hmm. oh, I think I watched the 19, the one of the movies on a plane once with Molly, but (laughs) maybe that's how the movie starts. I don't know. Well, so this is, this, this is like the, the famous introduction to, to Pride and Prejudice. This is the famous opening lines of the book. Yeah. So to also start the podcast off that way, uh, is really just, it's, it's such a, a testament to the, to the legacy of both the book. And the podcast. It was a cool intro because then right after that, we get the iconic, this is Becca, this is Molly, and we're here to talk about Jane Austen, which I think is still how they do their episodes today. Consistent. I mean, consistently Consistent. throughout the whole series. And and again, like this is something where like, you know, you see most podcasts kind of like change up the formula and switch things around. Yeah. It's, it, Molly and Becca knew exactly what they wanted from this podcast from day one. And I love that they also give like, uh, a mention to the Patreon that doesn't exist yet, which now has like hundreds of people contributing. So it's really cool to see, to know what it grew to and then to see how it started. Um, but yeah, they introduce it. Molly says she's never read it. Um, and she also mentions there's a lot of things she's never read or saw or listened to. And they get into a conversation about Taylor Swift's new album at the time, which I think was Lover in 2019. I have no idea. But yeah, I, I also took note of this. <laughs> Yes, but I love this. And then I specifically noted a quote from Molly that she says, I only know the top hits of things, which if you know anything about Molly, um, this is false. Uh, She claims in the podcast that she knows the top hits. And if you play her any top hit of an artist that you think she will undoubtedly know, she will uh, she will not know it. She will not. She'll know the song, maybe, but she will not know the artist. Um, And it's really quite astonishing. Um, A couple examples of this are. I played Hey Ya for her and she, I think she thought it was Justin Timberlake or something. It was completely <laughs> off. Um, she thinks every rock song is Green Day. Uh, she thinks every pop female song is Katy Perry, uh, no matter how iconic the song is. So um, I just want to say that that uh, was a very funny quote to hear her say. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Becca says she grew up on Jane Austen. She's like a bit of a super fan. Her mom got her into it. You kind of get their background on it, which I think is a really nice way to introduce us to who they are and their relation to Jane Austen. Becca says she feels very honored to be introducing Molly to the Jane Austen experience, which yes. I called the J-E-A. Do we think that's going to stick? Maybe the J-E-A the is going to be like... Austin's J Austen's <laughs> Should wait, be on a t-shirt. Jane Austen. J-A-E. Oh, wait, J-A-E. Yeah, J-A-E. J-A-E. What? What? Wow. Okay, that sounds the, J- like, the Jane Austen. Experience. That sounds like some sort of like Deboro like highway. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I had to take the JAE oh, yeah. to get here. Um, I was on the JAE the other day and some guy flipped me off because apparently I was just, you know, uh I had a good fortune and was in want of a wife. So some guy just flipped me off on the JAE. That should be like an interactive video game where you're driving down a highway, but it's all like Regency era things that keep popping out at you and you have to like uh <laughs> dive out of the way. That's so funny. Um, okay, but then it's about four minutes into the podcast and they and they dive right into the recap, which I hey, I love getting right to it. I think what's so special about Molly and Becca's relationship is that it doesn't take long to gauge what it is. You know what I mean? Like you can mm-hmm. tell from right up front, just from those opening words, like who these people are, what their friendship is like, what this podcast is gonna be like. Uh, and you know, and just going back to that consistency, it's been like that for now uh, almost, yeah, four and a half years of just nonstop engagement with these two. And you just really see that that friendship right off the bat, that that loving relationship. It's so spectacular. Yeah. So for them to just go straight into the material, you know what's good. You know what's about to happen. Yeah. You know what you're about to experience. It's so lovely. Yeah. There are so many podcasts that have like, kind of two people who have similar interests but they're not really friends in real life or they just know each other through the through the thing that brought them together and like you can kind of tell especially in those early episodes of those podcasts that it's like a little awkward they're fig- they're finding their footing they're like figuring out what flows and all that and 
And this one, you're right, like right off the bat, it's like, oh, it's clear these people are friends and that this is something that they've been wanting to do and that Molly's so excited to dive into this world and Becca's so excited to show it to her. And it's really sweet. Uh, I did make a note that in the beginning of the podcast, before they dove into the content, they were kind of like, I don't want to say low energy. They were just like a more chill vibe where they were just kind of talking about it, giving their story. And then as soon as Molly starts recapping the book, I think she goes up a whole octave. Like her energy just heightens so much where she just gets so excited. So I just wrote, I think she likes it because <laughs> she's just like, she's like, okay, here we are. So then this happens. And then I was thinking this and I was like, wow, she really like found her uh, recap voice uh, in, immediately. Because I, cause I remember when, like I said, Beck and I met in February of 2020. So they were in the middle of reading Pride and Prejudice when, when mm-hmm. uh, I first met Becca. And I remember the fear being, what if Molly hates it? Like, what if Molly just hates the book, hates Jane Austen, hates all of it? Um, But you can tell just right off the bat, right from the first episode, that she is in. The only thing she hates about Pride and Prejudice seems to be Mr. Darcy. Boy, how much of that has changed over time. (laughs) She hates him so much in this episode. Like... Like every time he is mentioned, she uh she makes threats to him. She makes open threats. And then we also but we also get on the other side of that, the early signs of Daddy Bennett. We do. You're right. We get the yeah. which I, hey, I don't know what Daddy Bennett is. I imagine I think it's something that happens later in their podcast and becomes a thing. But this is my first time uh, diving into <laughs> the right. season of Pot and Prejudice. You'll see. I'll see. But I do know that she loves Darcy and that uh, that that perspective has also changed for her. Um, and I will say, I think Becca does such a good job. Like, obviously she has to keep Molly spoiler free, but just because that is true, like, doesn't mean she can't chime in on her thoughts, but she does such a good job of like giving her thoughts from that moment without spoiling too much of what's about to happen, even with like her opinion of people. Um, and she just gives additional commentary and like asks Molly about predictions in such a savvy way that it's like she's still so much involved with this podcast and these these episodes with the recap, but like knows how to direct Molly uh, the right way. Having known Becca for a little over four years, I can honestly say that she is a master poker face. Like, because yeah. we've watched so many TV shows together where like I'll ask a question thinking like, oh, I got her. Like She's got to answer this. And she just goes stone faced, and she's just like uh, the, the famous, the famous pot of prejudice lie, which which you'll come to learn. Mel is, I will neither confirm nor deny. She pulls that on me all the time. We were watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and she all the time, I will neither confirm nor deny. Ah, uh, how frustrating, but so good, <laughs> so good, so good, so good. Um, so Becca says that Jane Austen stands marrying for love. And then she says, she says, that brings me to a fun fact about Jane Austen. And then there's almost a little pause. And Molly says, ooh, fun fact. And I was like, maybe this is going to be a recurring segment on Pot and Prejudice of like, because she was like, this brings me to the fun fact section. And I was like, maybe it's going to get its own sound effect later on. So I don't know the answer to that. But I'm really hoping that fun facts with Becca about Jane Austen becomes a recurring segment on this podcast. I will neither confirm nor deny. (laughs) Perfect. Um, The fun fact, by the way, was that Jane Austen was only proposed to once when she was in her late 20s and she accepted. But the next day she she broke it off. Um, And my question to you, Mike, is that a fun fact? Uh, It's well, it is. It's fun in retrospect. I imagine at the time it wasn't fun for Jane or the person proposing. Oh, yeah. But for us. But for us. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, 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 you know, a few solid centuries have gone by. I think we're 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 OK to have a good chuckle at it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought it was a fun fact. And I hope this segment continues on in their podcast. I really I enjoyed it. Um, now, uh, this this gets them into a conversation about kind of the first thing we wanted to hit on, which we find hilarious, is their like opinions about dating. And Becca says, nowadays you have to show that you don't care and you got to be so casual with dating and you can't put too much energy into it. And Molly says, I wish that I would get brownie points with people by by with people I like by showing how much I care. And then Becca says her love language is walking up to people and being like, hey, I don't feel like hiding this anymore (laughs) and being direct. Um, And then she says, just kidding. I could never. 
uh, I think she said her love language is actually staying at home in sweatpants, eating Chinese food, which is also my love language, Becca. Um, but I thought this was a fun peek behind the curtain of who they were before they met us of, uh, of their opinions about dating, which we get a lot more later on in the episode. This is, this is hysterical to me. This is, this was like the funniest bit for me to like go back and and re-listen to because it's so funny hearing Becca just like talk about how like, oh, no, like my love language is staying at home in sweatpants and eating Chinese food. And like, like, oh no, like, like I'm not that direct. I can say like based on our first date, like, because I'm someone who loves directness. Like, just be direct. Say what's on your mind. You know, speak your intentions. Say what you're thinking. Uh, and just openly communicate. And that's really what has made like Becca and I work so well is the fact that we're both like that. We're both just like, yeah, this is my thought. Even like, I remember like on our very first date, she's like, hey, I'm going to be going away for an internship in Worcester, Massachusetts in like six months. So just a heads up. And I was like, cool. I appreciate you not hiding that from me. Like that would have been really weird to hide that from me and then spring it up on me last minute. And, and obviously, you know, everything worked out splendidly. So yeah. Yeah. It's funny to hear her be like, you know, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm so shy. I don't speak my face. No, she's, she's very direct. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You guys are the cutest. Oh. Oh, um, so after this moment, they talk about they go on a lot of tangents, which now I can say even just recording this with you, it's impossible not to. So, uh, you know what? That's not a critique because the tangents are fun and it's just fun to hear where their brains go. But they talk about how they got bagels to record this episode. And uh, then they said next time they'll get ice cream and wine. I don't want a spoiler here, but I'm just saying that I hope for the next episode uh, they have their ice cream and wine because I do think that would be enjoyable to listen to them uh, recap the next few chapters uh, with a little bit of wine in their system. Yeah, I mean, I can't, you know, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that there are many uh, food engagements that come up in the 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 pod and prejudice world. There are many meals that are shared. Uh, I would love to. Oh, that'd be a fun project if someone could like go through every episode and like tally up how much wine gets mm. drank throughout the entire series. I'd imagine I imagine they're probably in the dozens worth of of wine bottles. I think when I came into the picture, it was a lot of Sunday morning records. So it was a lot of bagels or breakfast tacos. But mm. bef- hey, before I met Molly, it might have been a completely different world with this podcast. So uh, that would be very fun to get that tally. <laughs> um, this brings us to another segment of Molly pulling what I call a classic Molly, uh, where she's talking about a movie she thinks she saw a long time ago that was a version of Pride and Prejudice. And she was like, it has Kira Knightley and Colin Firth. And Becca was like, mm, that's not possible. They're not in the same movie, which, of course, I don't know that. So I was like, yeah, that sounds right to me. Um, <laughs> but then Mo- but but this is such a classic thing with Molly. Then she like starts describing the movie she thinks she saw. And this is very common where she'll be like, I've definitely seen that movie. I know exactly what happens. And then we'll watch that movie and she'll be like, I've never seen this. I think I was thinking of something else. Uh, it happens a lot. We talk about the little little rascals versus um, uh, the Goonies. And she, every time we mention the little rascals, she's like, I love the little rascals. And then I talk about the little rascals. She's like, that's not familiar. And she's actually thinking about the Goonies. That's just one example. But this happens a lot. And I hope this happens more during this podcast with other adaptations where she's like, I think I've seen that. And then she's like, oh, no, I was just thinking about uh, Walk to Remember. Well, this is maybe a, a slight spoiler for more more recent Pot and Purchase episodes where they visit some of these film adaptations. But Becca has the opposite problem where she'll go, no, I've never seen that movie. No, I don't remember it. I've never seen this. And then we'll be in the middle of watching it and she'll go, oh, I've seen this. Yeah, I remember all of this. And then this is the scene when the, and then that's the scene when, and just like, then why? Okay, so let's, I guess we'll just turn it off and watch something else. Like, she just, like, she doesn't remember watching something until we're in the middle of watching it. I feel like that's kind of common though, because some people space the first few, the first half of something until you really get into it. And then you're like, oh, I just chose not to remember the beginning. Um, That's very funny. Um, Okay, then we get another great quote from Becca that made me um, happy for you. Uh, And the quote was, she said, I recently broke up with someone and my mom said, I'll kill him. Tell him who I need to murder. And I was just like, thank God Mike is safe. Uh, Because if your relationship had gone another way, her mom would be out for blood. Yes. And, and, you know, I I have developed a wonderful relationship with Becca's mother. It's, 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 we, 
she loves me. I love her. It's very, very, uh, very loving family that Becca comes from. And I'm very appreciative of that. Um, but I also am fully aware that if I had ever done anything to break Becca's heart, uh, I would be dead. My face would be on milk cartons across the country <laughs> because they would never find the body. Is that still a thing? No. I hope that's still a thing. You would think with social media that wouldn't be a thing, but I kind of hope that that is still a thing. My question is, was it ever a thing? Like, oh, that is, that, hey, that's the question. Okay. Back to Pot and Prejudice. Back to Pot and oh, Prejudice. Okay. So, so uh, around 16 minutes in, uh, Becca does another thing, which I, I do hope will be a recurring segment. And I do like how she talks about moments in the podcast where she's like, this is the time in the podcast where, as if it's like happened before in a previous episode, but it's the first episode. So I'm just like hoping she's planting the seeds. And she says, this is the time in the podcast where I bring up the kinky nature of their relationship. And again, I was just like, is there going to be a kinky segment every episode? I hope so. I will neither confirm nor deny. Um, But what I will say is that so and this is this is something that comes up a lot in Pot and Prejudice. There are a lot of there are a lot of John uh, uh Jane Austen podcasts out there. Mm-hmm. Um you know some of them you know are pretty raunchy and some of them are pretty fun. But I think for the most part when you're like engaging with this kind of literature, uh the conversations tend to be pretty you know, like, like pretty traditional, you know, almost like conservative where it's like, you know, ah, yes. Like, let's talk about the finer meticulous points of, uh, Mm -hmm. um, you know, literature. But with Becca and Molly, they find, they pull out like the, 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 some of the funnest, silliest things. They really take the book and put it in such a modern context. Um, So what I will say is, yes, there will definitely be more, kinky conversations some more uh conversations about sexuality and the nature of uh romance and lust in jane austen jane austen after hours Ooh, kinky (laughs) Uh, i love that i love that they don't shy away from that and that they're really putting in the effort to like make it modern and it doesn't feel forced like it doesn't feel like they're just putting in like modern lingo to like be like we need to give a modern take like it feels like this is what they're finding enjoy like enjoyable and uh what they're yeah getting joy from so it feels it's really fun to listen to that and make it relevant to today Mm -hmm. um that's awesome okay and then here's the part in my notes where i wrote as i recap their episode in my notes i wonder how molly decides what to take notes on and not just recite the entire book back to us because i was like i found myself just typing everything they were saying back and forth and i was like how does she recapping is a skill and note taking is a skill and walking us through what happens in the time frame of like an hour episode for four chapters worth i was like props to molly this is actually pretty difficult for me to recap this in in a concise way and it's it's such a it's such a profound skill that both Molly and Becca have. Uh, their brains really do work like like computers. I mean, it's it's incredible the way that they organize this information in a concise way, in a way that's digestible and understandable. It's so again, it's just one of those like it's such a match made in heaven because they are just so compatible with each other in terms of like having these sorts of conversations where they can have these really deep and serious conversations, but then also go off and talk about uh, uh, the, the the silly nature of things and how much we hate Mr. Darcy, but, you know, oh, but Daddy Bennett, like, it's such a delicate balance. And they, they, they walk that line so perfectly together. It's really, really fantastic. Totally. I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, then we dive into chapter two. And this is, again, where they start loosening up, like, as as hosts and as whatever, like, um, off the bat, Becca's like, chapter two, where Mr. Bennett is still having a lot of fun fucking with his wife. And I was like, this is just great. I don't know. It just felt very, uh, very fun. OK, so I said, chapter two, we're loosening up. Um, Molly says, Mr. Bingley, that's a stupid name, which just made me laugh. I thought uh, that was funny. Um, oh, and here's another moment that made me laugh. And I don't know what was true back then. But Molly says, I'm going to make a note for our editor to insert this line from before into right here in this moment. And I wrote, isn't Molly the editor? Yeah. <laughs> she is now. I know she edits at all of their podcasts, like content wise, and she'll be the one like splicing stuff together. So I was like, 
did she just say that to make it seem official or <laughs> did she not know who the editor was or uh, did she know it was her? I don't know. I was just like, hmm, that's interesting. So, yeah, I so I don't know to what extent. Because I know Graham was definitely involved at that point. So I'm thinking maybe she was referring to Graham. Maybe. But yeah, Molly is the editor of the podcast. And then Graham does like the sound design and everything. So I'm like, what's, maybe it was just to make it seem like, <laughs> like to add some legitimacy to it. Like, yeah, I'll run this. I'll run this by uh, by the editor, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> our producing team, our producing team. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, then they get Mr. Bingley confused with Mr. Bennett. Molly keeps getting the two of them confused. And she's like, I can't even write Mr. B in my notes because they have the same initial. And then I thought, what if somebody takes what we're doing right now a level further and does pod and pod and pod in prejudice and, and reviews this episode of us reviewing their first episode? My thought was they would have the same issue because we're both M's. So right. uh, in their notes, it would be like M. Yeah. Yeah. So bummer. And someone's going to do it. Like, it's inevitable, right? Somebody's going to cover this episode. Well, because you can't even... I mean, yeah, that's... I mean, that's obviously going to happen at some point. We're going to blow up after this. But, um, but yeah, because even with Molly, it's M-M-M. Becca's the only one that you can shorthand. She makes it easy for you. She does. Thanks. Ugh. Thank God for Becca. Thank God for Becca. Um, okay, so then... I don't know if yours got interrupted. Mine got interrupted with an aver- another ad. Uh, or a promo, I'll say, for a different podcast called Hot and Bothered, which um, I know the host, Vanessa, they recently did an episode with. So it was just a, a spliced in ad. Um, and my thought on this was I actually I thought it was a good time to get an ad. So I had no issues with where it came. But I did notice that the mic quality improved significantly. So just putting two and two together, I was like, Molly must have gotten a new mic set up sometime between this first episode of Pot and Prejudice and now. And hey, I'm hoping that like their podcast was successful and they had money to to, to put into the pod and, and get themselves some new tech because it sounds great now. And it didn't sound bad then, but I noticed it when the ad came on. I was like, whoa, the mic quality improved significantly. Well, I will neither confirm nor deny. Uh, you'll have to listen along to see when that change happens and how successful they get. But um, yeah, but, but you, there's clearly, these were clearly ads that were uh, added in post and yeah. the, the advertising was not something that they had in the earlier episodes you know they no. were still starting off fresh they only had like they said like a few listeners some friends some family members um you know the goal obviously was to eventually get some revenue and, and build some advertising but this is what i mean when i say like these are two people who are just so compatible because like, like, especially like Molly just has this innate talent to just organize all this stuff, get everything together, reach out to the right people. It's really, really just it's 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 a podcast that so speaks to both of their strengths, both Becca and Molly. They are both such talented people. hundred um, percent. Yeah, they make a great team. Um, OK, so after this ad, um, I will admit I had to skip so I could stay spoiler free on Harry Potter and they talk about how they get into a tangent about the C- a Cinderella story with Hillary Duff and Becca was like did you know that Rupert Grint was supposed to like play the other lead but then he was busy filming a Harry Potter or whatever and Molly freaks out she's like I had no idea I'm so torn up about this and then they start as soon as they mention Ron Weasley I had to skip to when this was over because I am staying spoiler free on Harry Potter of which I've been um kind of in the first few chapters of book four now for four years because then J.K. Rowling became a monster and I stopped reading it. Is Molly also making you read the Harry Potter books? Well, she was, but then J.K. Rowling got back on her bullshit again and we were like, we can't support this, even though we I already like we have the books and we're not giving more money. It right. just felt wrong. So, And I was doing a similar thing to Pot and Prejudice where when I was going through them for the first time in 2020, I was like live updating on my Instagram stories, like my thoughts and my predictions and very similar to Molly with this, like saying what I thought. And it was so fun. But then once everything else started happening with JK Rowling and I was like, this feels, I don't want to like be putting this out as entertainment. And that was half of the fun for me. So anyway, it's on pause, but I skipped, I skipped the Ron Weasley uh, spoiler. And then we get right into how much Molly hates Mr. Darcy. And this thus begins her her rant about uh, how much she hates him. And Becca, this is an interesting moment because Becca says, 
If you like hearing about how much Mr. Darcy sucks, you're going to love a good chunk of this book. And Molly, without really like taking that in, she just says, yep, and kind of just moves on. And I was like, I, I wonder if Becca is being strategic and being like a good chunk of this book, not the whole book, a good chunk. Well, and this is what I mean when I say Becca is like an expert at spoilers because she yeah. she's so clever in the way she uses her language. She has such an economy of, of language that she uses to really avoid those like really specific spoilers or like saying something that's true while not necessarily giving away the whole bag. It's she's so smart. Yeah. And it makes it fun to like go back like if they ever go back and listen or if their fans ever go back and listen knowing what they know now about Molly and Becca it's it was fun for us to like hear those little easter eggs and be like oh that was so savvy the way she just slipped that in (laughs) um okay here we get a great quote from Becca where she says love yourself a Bingley we all stand a gentle beta male did she predict the future Mike I, you know, listen, I I would love to sit here and pretend like I'm deeply offended by being called a a beta male, but it is true that Becca did find her, her Charles Bingley to the point where if you actually like look at the, um, the BBC master version of, uh, Pride and Prejudice, the guy that they cast to play Bingley could easily be my brother. Incredible. Like he looks just like me. And so I remember watching that and being like, yeah, because she also mentions like, you know, oh, yeah, like Ron Weasley is just everyone's stupid boyfriend. And like literally Becca has found her, her Charles Brindley, her her Ron Weasley, her 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 dopey little beta male. Could not be more spot on. <laughs> um, they talk about how Bingley's sisters uh, like Jane and and that Bingley had to go to them for approval. And Molly's like, Molly says she relates that she needs 12 people's opinions before she can date anybody and needs all of her friends to approve. So um, I'm just wondering now as the person dating Molly, like what that process was like for her in terms of getting my, getting me approved um, to the board of, of friends. I mean, I can speak to that experience because I was, you know, I was there for that, that process. Was there a, was there a Google form? Was there a survey that was sent out? Uh <laughs> Yes, it was very uh it was a, a rigorous process. There were multiple uh, interviews about. No, it was um I just remember like I don't remember like the first I, I like vaguely remember like the first time that we had met, but I just remember it was just like very casual like I was like, you know, so we guys think like we should go and we we're like, "Molly, she's fucking great. Like what are you talking about?" And I remember like one of Becca's first like first opinions about you mm. was yeah, Molly, she's just she's just like lady version of Mike. Oh, yes, this I knew. And Molly yeah. was like 100. She's like, I'm Molly was like, I'm dating the female Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, does improv, drinks craft beer, does running. Like, <laughs> it's just literally the, the, the same person. I love that. Uh, and true, we kind of look the same right now. We got like the same glasses going on. The curly same hair one. is going on. The curly yeah. hair. You're right. We yeah. are We are one. Mike and Mel are one. Hey, if you guys like this podcast, smash the subscribe button because we can keep this going, you know? Mike <laughs> and Mel for the win. We're taking over. What are you talking about? The plan is to do every episode upon prejudice. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why you would question that. Yeah, it's so weird that we wouldn't just keep going. Um, okay, <laughs> so then uh, fast forward, they get to Becca's study questions. And now I have listened to some newer episodes, so I, I do know that the study questions remain a thing for all of their episodes. Uh, so why don't we'll go through their study questions and, and obviously review their podcast. But then I know you have also brought some study questions mm-hmm. for me about their podcast. So, so great. OK, so uh, Becca asked uh, Molly what her thoughts on the first line of the book were. Um, and Molly said she still hates Darcy, but she loves the passion, which I think is is a classic Molly answer. Um, and Becca said, uh, oh, this is where they get into a great conversation about relationships. Becca said. This book is very, very old, and I think it's wild that we still have these issues of people being like, oh, you're single? Are you okay? And Becca says, I'm fine. I have great friends, and I'm working on my life, and I'm super successful, and I like I like myself. And um, and Molly says it's the first time in her life that she hasn't wanted to be in a relationship. And she was like, my best friend started dating someone, and my mom and her mom and her have all said, you should start dating someone. You'd feel less lonely. You should find a significant other. Um, and then she found herself like dating just because someone told her to. And then here's potentially my favorite line from this episode. Becca says, we don't need to date people. 
no man is going to have to support me. And I said, yes, Becca, yes, with my hand, with my emoji hands in the air. Um, now, of course, we know how this turned out for both of them. I mean, truth be told, it, it's still true for Becca. There is no man supporting her. She is. Totally. She is. Well, I mean, not to say that she supports both of us, but we are both like independently supporting ourselves. Yes. While just supporting each other emotionally. And- totally. And I think when I started dating Molly, like, I, I mean, I had this perspective on dating my whole like adult life was like, I'm good. Like, I have a great life. I was never like super like I must be in a relationship to feel fulfilled. So I love that they sort of brought this conversation to the forefront because a lot of people can relate to this and also is interesting relating that back to Pride and Prejudice, which like some of the same ideals are happening where people like the moms are like, when are you going to get married? And we're all like, we're fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, same. Like when I came, when, when Molly and I met, like she was not dating anybody and it was very much like, eh, I just one night was watching Lord of the Rings and decided to uh, like activate Bumble and just see. And then we just like happened to connect that night. And had that not happened that night, like who knows? So um, they both are still very like their own people. And we, I think we can relate that we are too. And that like, we all, we compliment each other, but we're not like saving them from the single world of loneliness and, and doom. <laughs> Definitely not. No, it's about, it's about, enhan- it's about like, it's about enhancing each other and, yes. and finding the, the strengths in one another and, and building on that, you know, building a I love that. from that. Yeah. Uh, enhancing one another. That's really sweet. Yeah. I like that. Okay, great. So Molly asks, or Becca asks Molly's thoughts on the Bennett sisters. And Molly says, Lydia might be gay, or maybe I just want her to be gay. That was the one quote I pulled because I said, of course, Molly would. Uh, I imagine this podcast is going to have a lot of potentially gay characters uh, that Molly is really pining for to be gay. Um, I know you can't confirm or deny. I can't, cannot. I will neither confirm nor deny. I will not as to whether, right. whether or not. Nope. I understand. Don't do it. Um, and then we get, here's where we get uh, sweet Becca. She said, she's talking about Colin Firth and she's like, we love Colin Firth as a human. We would love for him to be on our podcast. And so would our 3.5 listeners. And that just made me really uh, happy for where their podcast has grown to. I mean, I think at this point they're almost at a million downloads, uh, which is absolutely wild and, um, and have like, I don't know, 15, 20,000 followers on Instagram and, and uh, so many listeners per episode. So to hear that they like weren't doing the podcast for that reason and they were happy with their three and a half followers and they were like, we're just happy to be doing this uh, made me really proud for 2019, uh, Becca and Molly. They're so great. They're doing so great. We love that. We love that. Um, then we get uh, Becca asks uh, for the funniest quote and Molly has two. She says, uh, I think these are quotes. She said, I'm sick of Bingley. I think that was maybe a quote. And then she just said, I might just be quoting Molly. Molly said, I really like it when we just rail on Mr. Darcy. And then she quotes something that Darcy said that she was like, I hate him so much. She really spent 40% of this episode talking about how much she hates Mr. Darcy, which uh, is she should go back and listen to this if she hasn't. It's very funny. Um, her The big question going forward was, what does Mr. Bingley see in Darcy? So again, very Darcy uh, hatred driven. And then who wins the chapter? And they agreed that Mrs. Bennett won the chapter. Um, and at that point, Molly just says that she's staying spoiler free. She doesn't want spoilers. Becca's like taken over the Gmail account. So if anybody has feedback or questions, like send it to her. Um, Molly said she had to unfollow the Sparknotes Instagram, which I didn't even know existed. So uh, I'm I'm now following the Sparknotes Instagram. Um, and uh, and then they end it by saying, until next time, say proper and find a husband. And And that's just Becca. Becca says that whole thing, which... I think in future episodes, I'm curious where the shift happens. Becca just says stay proper and then Molly finishes it or vice versa. Yeah, it's it. That's that's one of the ones that that develops over time, uh, usually based on whatever they're talking about. Um, but again, just one of those running jokes that just stuck all the way through. And and the fans love it. If you're at the if you, you know, if you're at any of the live streams, you can hear everyone like chiming in along with all the, the jokes and the bits. So, yeah. Ah, yay, Pot and Prejudice. Yay, Pot and Prejudice. Okay, so that ends my recap of it. Now I know you, uh, as the Becca figure of of our podcast, have some questions mm-hmm. as well. Uh, yes. Um, so so I did not, so I'm not as good or as organized as, as Becca is. So I don't have any, I only have the standard ones that I stole from Becca. But But I am curious though, just in terms of like the relationship between Becca and Molly. 
you've seen it then, right? Right, because we're mm. going back in time and listening to this first episode. Uh, and being close with them now, you see it now. Are there any changes? Are there any differences in the way that they approach like the subject matter or even approach each other that you have seen change? Um, yeah, what, 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 anything that, that you've noticed or, or picked up on? Honestly, I was really impressed and surprised by like how close to now it all was. The only section that was a little bit different was those like first five minutes where the energy, like I said, it, it wasn't low energy. It was just like a more like cautious energy, which I think now they come in at 100 every episode where they're like, this is Becca, this is Molly. We're here to talk about Jane Austen, blah, 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 blah. And then they're like off where this one, they were just kind of like they did the quote from Pride and Prejudice and they sort of talked about it. And then we got the theme music and then we kind of got them like introducing themselves in just like a very casual way. And then the energy flew up as soon as they started doing the recaps. Um, so my only thing that I really think has changed is just like from the episodes I've heard and and from their relationship is just like they're always coming at 100 now. Like they they know their vibe and there's no caution. Um, but in terms of the bulk of the episode, like I was like, that's them. Like that's the two of them as friends. That's the two of them as podcast hosts. Like they really uh, knew who they were right off the bat uh, and knew what this podcast was right off the bat. And like, I don't think they've really changed very much, which is really impressive. No, absolutely. I mean, I think I think those like opening few minutes is just really them trying to find their footing, trying to figure out what this podcast is going to sound like, what the the you know the the beats are going to feel like. Um, but yeah, even since day one, their their friendship has just remained so special and so pleasant, um, and it's really really nice to see, you know, to see that the early on, you know, Becca and Molly knew each other before the podcast but um i think they've they've both said independently that like the podcast is really something special that has brought them both together in 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 a very special and meaningful way so i'm glad you picked up on that yeah the only the only other change i've seen is that they're way less single now they're way less single now becca even more so less single she's got she's got a ring on it she got a ring she's on it she's got a ring on it <laughs> Uh, okay, so now I will. I'll, I'll go through the uh, the, the standard uh, uh, okay, great. mic study questions. Uh, what was the funniest quote? Um, I think th- I have two, just like Molly did. One is from Becca. One is from Molly. Um, Becca's to me was, or uh, no man is going to have to support me. Which again, I took this not as like super financially, but just as like emotionally in a relationship. I was like, there's going to be a man, Becca. And this is very funny to listen to. And the other one, the other one I'll quote was Molly saying, I only know the top hits of things and songs. Because <laughs> it's just not true. That made me laugh out loud because it's just not true. I think one of my favorite quotes was uh, was Molly saying, Mr. Bennett has game. Just because <laughs> it's so, it's just, again, it's one of those like early morsels of like a, a joke that will just keep developing as we go along. Yeah. Um, and it was just really, really fun to see um, to see the early onset of that. And also the, you know, oh, all, you know, all of our seven listeners. Yeah, yeah. that's changed over time. Um, any questions moving forward? Oh, um, hmm. yeah. I mean, I I think my questions are all related to like when certain shifts happen. And like, I am very curious sort of now knowing that like Darcy is like a loved character and just is like flawed and whatever that like I am curious for their podcast to hear when that shift happens in the book and when that shift happens with Molly and to hear Molly's reaction to like like when Molly goes from despising him to like loving him uh I feel like is going to be such a fun episode so going forward I'm excited to hear that um yeah and I'm excited uh to hear them cover some of the movies and see which movies in fact Molly has or has not seen because I feel like sh- uh, her predictions were off yeah, just, just a little bit just a little bit um yeah and then I mean last but not least who won the episode oh, who won the episode I think Mr. Darcy won this episode of Pot of Prejudice because <laughs> he I think he played Molly so hard right he really I mean it really I mean the thing like, Jane Austen knows what she's doing in in writing a character and setting the expectations, yeah. but it is genuinely funny how in the early offset, like like 
Molly did not know where this was going at all. And I'm someone who I had I had never read Pride and Prejudice front to back. Uh, but I I knew the story. I had seen maybe bits and pieces of some of the adaptations. I knew Mr. Darcy is the good guy in the end. And it's so funny. And you'll see this as you listen along. It's so funny seeing Molly hate him so much and so deeply when like the rest of us know that's gonna change that's yeah that's gonna change you're gonna have some different opinions later but that's all spoiler territory so we won't go into it because you know obviously we have so much more of pot and prejudice to cover it you and me we're gonna do it all so yeah so 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 how you feel so so what's 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 going on in the noggin uh, nothing. Do we want to do, do, should we do the final tagline or, or do we have more to, to cover? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just sitting here realizing how, how talented Becca and Molly are at making all these oh. transitions so smooth because I don't know how to do them. <laughs> Shout out to, 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 uh, Becca and Molly and, and everything that they're doing. And, um, yeah, um, I rate this yeah. podcast, um, five, five, um, regency era dresses out of five um yeah uh, i'll i'll rate it uh five hand flinches out of five i don't that's know a what future that means. reference that's a future <laughs> reference stay tuned to learn what that means <laughs> but um yeah uh in the meantime uh until next time stay proper and go cover your partner's podcast without them knowing you're doing it. Yeah. Um, and if you're Molly and you're listening to this, April Fool's! April Fool's! Yay! Yay! We love you, Molly. <laughs> should we say that at the beginning? Hey, should we tell our editor to splice that in at the beginning? Oh, yes. We should tell our, our editorial team, our production assistant <laughs> folks, people okay, that we have. All right. All right. Great. Okay. We've done it. Okay. Transition out. Bye. Bye. <laughs>